Hey Hodlers, how's it going? Today's gonna be a little bit of a special video. We have Alex Mashinsky, the CEO of Celsius, asked him a couple of questions, kind of veered into crypto, Celsius, regulations, so it's a mixed bag. I hope you guys enjoy it. How's it going, Hodlers? Today we have a very special episode. We're gonna be talking with Alex Mashinsky today, uh, going over some questions that some of you have asked about Celsius and uh, just have a general discussion about crypto. Alex, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. Uh, thank you. So I, I, first I, I want to ask because I, I like obviously a lot of people know you from your AMAs now. You've really kind of distanced yourself from, say, traditional finance where it's really detached where who is holding my money. Um, what initially got you into crypto and what kind of made you go into this specific problem to solve? Because I recognize that you've done a lot of different startups and everything else through your career. Sure. Yeah. So <clears throat> I, I think since the financial crisis in 2008 uh, we we've basically seen uh zero accountability right we've not uh, seen a single banker go to jail we haven't seen anyone pay a fine uh, basically no one got even a slap on their hand right basically the government or we the people came and bailed out uh, all these banks who caused uh, trillions of dollars worth of damage you know millions of Americans, I think 21 million Americans lost their homes and nothing happened. So, and since then, all we've seen is money printing left and right. That's basically, you know, we pay 50% to in taxes and then the other 50% gets debased or devalued because of money printing. So Satoshi's invention of uh, basically creating a new financial system is, is definitely here to replace all of that. And I was involved in a, uh, just in the beginning as a whole hodler of uh, coins, but then I realized that uh, we can actually build a, a platform to earn yield. Yield is something that old people like me remember. We used to earn six, seven percent by just giving our money to Citibank or Chase Manhattan or somebody else. Today we're earning zero for our money, and it's not because the banks can't pay us. The banks are earning more than record profits more than ever before they just choose not to give it to us so uh, so celsius is all about that yield right being able to have your money work for you earn money on your money if it's bitcoin on bitcoin or stable coins on stable coins and uh, also take a loan so you don't have to pay taxes right you can defer your taxes take a loan against the assets just like the rich people do right so tell me a little bit about the process so i have crypto i deposited in celsius what happens at that point yeah so you can register on a website open an account or you can download an app and do it right on your phone and uh, uh, you basically verify who you are we need to know who you are and then we support 43 different assets so it's 13 different stable coins so you can choose you can say I like uh, USDC or I like Paxos so I like uh, USDT or, T or TUSD right we don't care which one of them is you, you put it in, you earn 8.8% .8 per year compounding. Right. You, you don't need you to talk trade. You don't need to farm. You don't need to move stuff around. No transaction fees, no gas fees, no withdrawal fees, right? You just earn that money. Every Monday you get paid. Anytime you want to withdraw, you can withdraw. There's no lockup. There's no contract. There's no uh, go to the branch and fill up forms or anything like that. So that's kind of like the basic service. You like Bitcoin or Ethereum. We have, again, 30 something assets that are the kind of the crypto heavy assets, obviously more risky than your stable coin. And Bitcoin, you can earn 6.2%. Ethereum is five and a half percent. You don't have to do anything. You just put it in. We do all the hard work, right? We do the lending. We do the yield creation. We do the staking. And uh, we blend it all together and deliver it as yield every Monday. So, you, so you, you just get everything we do results in you having more coins, right? Or ending up with more coins. You hodl, you end up with more coins. You take a loan, that means you're not selling the coins. You end up with more coins, right? So, so uh, you, you buy coins on our platform using our services. You pay less in fees. That means you're earning more coins. You're getting more coins on that transaction. So... And, uh, you know, I'm the largest user of Celsius. I have over $300 million of my own money there. 
So it kind of, I built it for myself and then a million people showed up. We just crossed a million users worldwide just yesterday. And uh, so we're super excited about the platform, $22.5 billion. From yeah, I, I recently saw that and you know that, that's a lot of money. And I recently, I think it must have been months ago, it seemed uh, just like days ago that it was $3 billion that you were celebrating $3 billion for Celsius. <laughs> so it's just insane growth. Where do you see Celsius going, especially inching out into uh, regular people now understanding and getting into crypto? Well, look, th this is a fight for all the money in the world, right? So, so uh, we, we're not stopping. I mean, we, when we wrote our white paper in 2017, I said our goal is 100 million. So we're only 1% uh, uh, into the goal. You'd be like, wait a second, uh, 22 billion, that's 1%. So what's 100%? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. We, are, we are going after all the money in the world. And see, I, I think uh, some of my viewers, and I know uh, like just in general, a lot of people are worried about inflation. We see how much money has been created in just the last year. And we don't know anymore with M2 reports not being published. So we're kind of in the dark at this point. What do you think about hyperinflation? And do you think cryptocurrency is kind of our way out? Or do you think inflation is not going to happen? Well, I, I'm again... If you believe in the consumer price index and you think that 5% is real inflation, then you don't know what's happening. I mean, the, the government announced how much money it's printing. It, it, they, every time they pass a law, 1.3 trillion, 2.8 trillion, you know, the Fed is telling you that they've added 4. Point something trillion, right? You have to add all that together. And when you look at how much money actually exists, you see that in the last 12 months, there was over 40% inflation in one year, 40%, right? So now homes, we know home prices in the major cities increased 20% in Austin, in Florida, in, in, in California, homes went up 20 to 30%. So consumer price index excludes how much money was printed, excludes how much your house went up and so on, so on. So, uh, it calculates the price increase on, on food, on, on other things. But that's the last thing to happen. The last thing to happen in inflation is your milk suddenly doubling in price or your, or your bread costing you twice as much. Right. First thing to happen is usually money is being printed and all that new money goes to Wall Street. All that new money goes to the people who are close to the plate. Uh, it's called the Cantillion event. It's, it's been around for 400 years. Mm -hmm. And, and it, we are living through it right now. Uh, you know, yesterday I was on a panel with uh, John Hopkins University and there were all these experts there with double and triple PhDs. Uh, and, and I was arguing with them exactly over this point. And I was saying, you can't look in a uh, back mirror in your car and tell me, oh, look, there's nothing going on. There's no inflation. Let's, let's look at last month numbers or last quarter's numbers or what happened last year. You have yeah. to look forward and you're about to hit a wall. Uh, so so I'm, I, I live in the future and the inflation is already here. Yeah, it, it really is a, an ostrich moment, a head in the sand kind of moment where nobody's looking ahead of them. And a lot of people can see the crash coming. Um, so and, and I've, I've been ranting about this since 2020. I've been you can go back to, like you said, the AMAs from March, April, May of last year of me saying all the stuff, this is not going to uh, end well. We are putting a safety net under the, econ the entire economy. We're creating a zombie economy, just like Japan. We're saving the good companies and the bad companies. We're saving the cruise companies and the airlines. We have a process for bankruptcies. All these companies should go through normal bankruptcy and they either emerge or they don't emerge from bankruptcy. But for us, for all of us, we the people, again, to subsidize all these companies, why? Because they are uh, rich and because they have access to Wall Street. And now our kids and our grandkids are going to have to pay all this debt, right? This is not something you just write off, okay? We owe uh, right now over $30 trillion in debt. We're the largest debtor nation in the world. We used to be the richest country in the world, but we squ squandered it away with wars and with money printing and helicopter money and and again, giving money to very, very rich, powerful companies so they can get through Corona without much pain. Yeah, I, I think not enough people recognize that anytime we're bailing ourselves out of a, a 
uh, some sort of event, you know, we're paying for that generations ahead. So uh, with equities being, you know, I'm uh, a little bit of equities, but more so for me, I'm cryptocurrency, some metals. What would you say are like safe assets at this point to kind of hedge against, say, U.S. dollar savings? Well, so for each person, it's different. You know, uh, uh, it really has to do with your age. Uh, where do you live? Is your income denominated in dollars or in Canadian dollars or in pounds or or a local currency like, uh, you know, like uh, if you live in Argentina, uh, how you should save is very different than if you live in uh, in California or whatever. So but in general, you should still have some stocks. I think that should be the, the largest part of your portfolio. You should get rid of most of your bonds. If you're still holding bonds, you did very well, right? The bond uh, our prices, uh, basically the yields went down dramatically. So the prices went up, cash them out. Now is a great time to cash them out. Take those proceeds and allocate them between gold and crypto, right? You should have some in cash as well, because again, you, you're probably going to have an opportunity to buy distressed assets. But uh, you should definitely have, like, my, my thinking is something like 60% in stocks and then maybe 10% in gold, 10% in uh, uh, stable coins. You can earn 8.8% on your stable coins while you're waiting for something good to show up and the rest of it in different Bitcoin or crypto assets. Right. Um, now, with regulations, because that's been... NFTs. What all... You Sorry, know, NFTs. One percent and NFTs. One percent NFTs. That's that's a good rule. I, you might as well have a little bit of risk, right? Um, I guess it's not risk; it's speculation, in, speculation in terms of some. Yeah, yeah, yeah NFTs. Um, so I I understand like it's probably hard to operate a financial company in itself, but a crypto financial company in you know in the United States, Canada, and all the other different countries. What are the big difficulties that you get with regulations or that whole aspect of everything? Yeah, so so a lot of uh, people think that regulators want to shut down crypto. They hate crypto, or or the regulators are worried about the consumer. They're worried about basically people putting their assets into a company and the company going out of business, or the company running away with the money, or the company not doing what it promised. So it's not that they're against crypto. They're it's just that in crypto we had many instances of bad actors. And I think regulators just trying to understand, okay, who is a good actor and who is a bad actor? So right now, what you're seeing is a lot of regulators just asking for a lot of information. They're saying, okay, who are you? Where are you operating? What are their rules? What are your procedures? Do you have insurance? You know, how you do what you do? Do you have the assets you, you're claiming that you have? You know, who are your banks? And so on and so on. So, so we're going through this kind of a discovery where regulators are saying, okay, who is a good actor? Who is actually... Uh, doing what they promised and who's a bad actor. And you're seeing regulators chasing Binance and other companies because they're operating offshore and they effectively are not uh, bound by the rules uh, that each country has. And, and that's really where the conflict is between many of these platforms, offshore platforms and uh, the service providers. Celsius has been compliant since day one. We filed if with FinCEN, we filed a Reg D with the SEC. We we can continuously provide information to regulators, and and we we operate here in 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 the, in the United States. We have offices in London. We have offices in other con uh, other countries. So we're not hiding. Like, try to find an office for Binance. You know. Right. Right. So 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 I think. Um, 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 that's really the big difference between the people who are kind of trying to invest for the long term, right? Obviously, Celsius is planning to be here for many years and uh, we wouldn't have 22 billion in assets or a million customers if we were doing something illegally. Yeah, completely. So with that in mind, with traditional finance right now, do you find that you're maybe getting like any pushback with banks in terms of a legislative push or lobbying or uh, how do you feel that Celsius disrupts or may not disrupt the banking industry right now as it stands? Yeah, so f first they ignore you, right? Then then they laugh at you. Then they try to shut you down. And then they just uh, copy you, right? Uh, that's my version of the, the four steps. But uh, right now, I think most of the major banks kind of get tired of trying to shut everybody down. And when they, they're seeing, like, we're adding a billion and a half dollars a month net 
right, additions. So when they're seeing that kind of flood of uh, assets coming out of their dollar uh, accounts, uh, they basically say, okay, we try to stop it. We can't stop it. So let's get, let's join the game. So one after the next in the last three months, you've seen every major bank on wall street announce that they're opening a crypto desk. They're going to trade futures. They're going to offer their top customers the ability to buy the assets. So the reason they're doing it is because they're trying to slow down or stem the, the, uh, all their customers, uh, fleeing out of the banks. Right. So, which is a good thing. So, because if they have a lot of invested, that they, they don't want it to be shut down. They don't want it to be eliminated. So I think we're in in the last phase where they're actually joining and adopting. And then we're, it's okay to compete against the bank. I have no problem competing against the bank, but it's not okay when all they do is use their lobbyists and their uh, and their uh, cronies to kind of convince regulators to try to shut us up because we're bad. We're bad people. We're bad operators. Mm-hmm. Crypto is only being used for, uh, you know, for money laundering or I don't know what. Uh, come on, you know. Yeah, I, I think uh, Bitcoin obviously has that scarred path of its beginnings, but it, you know, in, in how it was. Let me give you a real stat. So let me give you a real stat because uh-huh. I actually did the homework. So in the last ten years, the major banks uh, paid two hundred forty billion dollars in penalties for money laundering for helping the Mexican cartel, for helping the Russian mob, for, I mean, you name it, any country in the world, you see banks being fined billions of dollars for uh, shady businesses. Uh, uh, Bitcoin in total, right? Uh, All of crypto, sorry, in total, uh, just over $2 billion. So 1% of what the banks paid, less than 1% of what the banks paid. Over the same period, over the same 10 years. So, So you tell me who's corrupt and who's actually... And again, it's not Bitcoin is corrupt, right? Just like the dollar is not corrupt, but criminals use dollars to do money laundering and all kind of other stuff. Does that mean the dollars are bad? No. Same thing. There are bad people who use crypto to do bad transactions. It doesn't mean crypto is bad. Just like, again, if you have a hammer, you can break windows with it, but you can also build a house. It doesn't make the hammer bad. It's a question of what are you using the tool for? Right, right. So uh, that brings uh, me kind of into security. A lot of people with banks, uh, they've they've trusted banks, they've used banks all their life. Uh, like obviously for me, I, I would be totally fine with detaching from my bank as soon as I can pay most of my stuff through my crypto wallets. That's what I'm going to do. Um, but I, I know a lot of people are still stuck with their banks. But a lot of uh, questions that I get are, you know, is Celsius safe? Like, is it safe to put my deposits in? So I just want you to kind of talk a little bit about what security Celsius goes through. Yeah, so so we have a lot of detail on our website. It's if you go through the menu, it's, it says why trust Celsius, and there is a lot of details there. But uh, Celsius, I think, is the most transparent company in this yield or lending uh, business. Uh, we've gone beyond any other company to show you the the equivalent of what we do. I'll, I'll just tell you what the equivalent is, right? So let's say. Uh, you get your paycheck and you go to your bank and right before you deposit, you tell the teller, look, I want to know what you're going to use this money for. I want to know who you're lending it to. I want to know how much interest you receive. I want to know how much of the interest I'm going to get. And I want to know what everybody else got in my, in the pool, right? That's what Celsius does through our proof of community, through our rewards explorer, you can go and dig into all of our transaction. You can see exactly how much I'm making, how much I'm I'm taking because I'm the largest user of Celsius, over three hundred million dollars as a user, not as a shareholder, right? You can see, am I if I'm being paid more than six point two percent on bit on my Bitcoin? You can see that, and you can say, hey, wait a second, we were all supposed to be equal. Now, do you think your bank branch is paying everybody the same? Absolutely not. Exactly. So. They, if you ask them for that, you said, hey, I want disclosure. I want to know what, what are you doing with my money? Well, what they're doing with your money is that the second you deposit that check, they lend it to somebody on their credit card and charge them 24%. And they're paying you 0.1%. I mean, that's daytime robbery. That makes the, the sharks and the, and the uh, payday lenders like good people, good actors, right? So... We got to put an end to that. And we're not going to fix this problem by 
going to Washington or a asking uh, politicians to, to write new laws, to curtail the bank, the bad practices, the predatory practices. No, we're going to build our own new system. We're going to go from TradFi or traditional finance to DeFi, and we're going to squeeze a, a lot more yield and pay it to the user, not pay it to the bank manager or the shareholders or all the rich guys who are basically uh, own the banks, right? So that's really what we need to do. And, and Celsius has been doing that before everybody else. We were the first ones to create this business model, right? First one to pay in kind, first one to pay with a token. It wasn't Compound, it wasn't Uniswap with Uni. Cell token was the first one to give you that option, pay you yield, still paying more assets, 43 assets. That's more than anybody else. Managing more assets than anybody else. No one has $22 and a half billion dollars right. earning yield. So, so I think we've delivered consistently for the community. That's what built trust. Now we have 100 competitors, which is great. It validates our model, right? The fact that 20, 50 other companies can do the same thing proves to everybody else, wait a second. If everybody's doing it, that means Celsius is legit. So never had a hack, never had money stolen. We did not have a single counterparty not pay us back any loans. So, right. so in four years, right? So, so uh, I don't think anyone else can make these statements. And that's what really sets us apart from, from everybody else. 500 people in the company, you know? Right, right. Uh, and so it, that's interesting. Right now, I, I believe the company is private amongst a couple of investors. You um, and who holds the controlling share? I'm the controlling shareholder. Right. right. Um, so is, is there any plans at this point to possibly take Celsius public? Is that something that would happen um, in the future? Is there talks about that? Like what's what's the current status of uh, those discussions? Yeah. So, uh... You know, going public, you would go public because you want to lower your cost of capital. You want to exit the investment. And we, I'm not looking for an exit, but we definitely are looking to lower the cost of capital. And uh, we're definitely looking at all options. And we will be annou making announcements uh, when we're ready. So no, nothing to talk about right now. Right, right. Okay. Um, so I, I use your uh, lending structure. I, I actually think it's really like fantastic for just individuals. I, I think that's incredible. Uh, is there any new additions coming to that? Because I know now you guys can automatically close everything through uh, the application. Like, are there new uh, any new plans for your loan structures? We First, we launched the web app. So now you can do everything on our website before you had to do everything on the mobile device. So there's a as, lot a of people. as a PC guy, I really appreciate that, by the way. Exactly. So, yeah. but now you can also register. You don't. You don't even have to have a mobile app. You can just go on the website, do everything on the website, right? Before you had to have a mobile app, then go to the site and so on. So we, we, we added a lot of functionality there. Uh, we're adding uh, uh, a lot of other uh, features, bells and whistles, like uh, our zero percent loans in California. If you live in California, you pay zero percent to take a loan. I mean, uh, that's just crazy, right? So, uh, but normal, if you live in anywhere else, it's 1% loans, right? No one else in crypto offers you 1% loans. And uh, also we are uh, launching a credit card. So you'll be able to get a, a card from us. Like you said, you want to be able to pay your bills. So if you have your card, you have your savings account, you have all these other things, you don't really need a bank anymore, right? You can basically create earn yield on your assets spend what you need to spend and you get to own or hold as many coins as you can afford uh, uh, which is a win-win for everybody right so uh, you know we're um, we announced we invested uh, over 200 million dollars in mining so why are we in mining because it's just another source of yield right for us our mining is like a bitcoin factory it just prints bitcoin which we use to pay yield as well so it kind of now you have five or six sources of yield, which allows us to, I don't know if you've seen, but most of our competitors have lowered their rates. Some lowered mm -hmm. it by 50%. Uh, people like BlockFi lowered the rate by 90%. So, so don't fall for that teaser rate. If you have two, three, five Bitcoins, look at what's your average in, right? Just look at how much you're getting or open an account with Celsius and keep your other account, compare the two for the same amount of Bitcoin, the same amount of ETH and see who pays you more. So 
we paid uh, 768 million dollars today 768 million right so do you think uh, these oh, investments Robert, that you... go to the nexo website nexo.io uh -huh. right uh -huh. on their side they're bragging about how they paid 50 million dollars right right they're right claiming yeah. to be they're claiming to be as big as we are well we paid 15 times more in interest so ask yourself wait a second how can be how can there be such a huge gap if Nexo is publishing the same rate as Celsius. How is this possible, right? Yeah, yeah. So, do you feel like the investments that you've made, those uh, kind of plays, going into crypto mining and uh, your other investments, do you think that's kind of set you apart from, say, BlockFi and Nexo? Well, again, we did this for the community. Everything else the other guys are doing is so they can make more money for themselves, right? I, again, I have, I. I Ask the CEO of BlockFi how much money he is in his platform. Ask the CEO of Nexo. None of them, have, they don't have $300 million. So they're not trying to earn the most out of the platform. They're trying to charge as much as possible in fees, selling you the coins or uh, charging you 24% on your credit card. You think you're making 1.5% in, in Bitcoin? You're paying crazy rate on interest. In one month, they're making more money than they paid you in yield. Mm -hmm. So... So people fall for these things and they don't really understand which platform is here to act in their best interest and which platform is here to steal from them just in a different way. So, right. so we are, you know, you're not going to find a single uh, Celsius who will tell you Celsius charged me a fee. You're not going to find. And we have a million right. customers. Why? Because we don't charge any fees. There's no withdrawal fee. There's no activity fee. There's no, you know, like a, a loan origination fee, nothing, right? Yep. So why? Because if, if we're charging fees, then we're just another bank. We're doing exactly what we're trying to fix here, right? We, yeah. uh, are, we, are we following Satoshi's uh, ideas or are we copying, bringing JP Morgan into crypto and creating just another version of it? Yeah, I think uh, I came to that realization in terms of fees when I first entered cryptocurrency and realized, you know, I'm getting scalped by Coinbase. Very new, right? Every new person 7%. goes to Coinbase. It's it's crazy. Every deposit, every single time. Um, Even Wall Street doesn't charge 7%. Though, it, like, it feels like robbery. So, yeah. you know, to, to find a platform, because I think I found you guys in May, to find a platform that didn't charge fees, it was kind of amazing for me. I was super happy to we find that. And that's, we have swaps coming up. In the next uh, two weeks, we're going to offer swaps, uh, no spread, no gas fee, uh, no transaction fee, no withdrawal fee, okay? No fee whatsoever. You can right. swap from any asset to any asset, no fee. What does it mean? Amazing. It means you're getting more coins, right? So you plan to not charge a spread at all? On, Nothing. On we this. make Amazing. enough money. We make enough money lending the asset. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we're giving the card for free. We're giving the swaps for free. We're giving the loans for free, right? Yeah. That's the whole point. I'm assuming that comes on the app. Are there plans to also launch that with the web uh, version yeah. eventually? It will okay. come by the end of this year. We'll be on the web app as well. Amazing. We'll Amazing. have all the services on the web app as well. Perfect. Perfect. Um, I, Alex, I have one uh, question for you. One final question, I, I guess, uh, just to kind of cap it off. I vaguely remember, and I could be wrong, and I could just embarrass myself here. I vaguely remember you talking about something about thorium uh, energy production in terms of nuclear, or at least hinting at that. Is that something that you've uh, thought of uh, before in uh, in the past? No, I, I, I'm into renewable energy production, but we're right. not, uh, like all of our mining is renewable, or we, we're net neutral, you know, carbon neutral on our mining. So how are you generating the energy right now for the mining of uh, Bitcoin? Well, we're not generating. We're just consuming mm -hmm. energy that we know is from renewable sources. Right, so okay. Or we buying uh, offset credits to to make sure that if there's, like if, we, if we're using the grid and 27% of the grid is carbon based, then we'll buy 27% worth of uh, uh, carbon credits to offset for that. So but we are not involved in uh, energy production, uh, which is a whole different business. You know, our job is just to again mine the bit with the Bitcoin. That's what we do. Right, right. Well, Alex, I really appreciate uh, you taking the time. It's uh, been a pleasure talking to you. Thanks for having me, and thanks for the work you're doing, educating the community and creating unique content. So keep keep at it. Thanks very much.